Today we're taking a look at the new Celestron Nature DX ED or extra low dispersion 10 by 42 binoculars. 10 means the magnification power or 10 power and 42 is the uh, diameter of the objective lens 42 millimeters and that's really a popular uh, size for bird watching and nature observation. Generally a lot of people are looking at 8 by 42 or 8 power by 42 and 10 by 42 and it kind of depends on your preference but uh, there's really a lot of uh, binoculars out there in this size range ranging in price believe it or not from thirty dollars up to almost four thousand dollars so obviously there's a big difference in what you get for your money the celestron nature dx ed binoculars is around the two hundred dollar range it's a high quality ed binocular uh, for a very reasonable price and that's kind of Celestron's uh, niche. They make really good products at reasonable prices. And we'll also talk about two accessories that come, go along with the binoculars to help in, uh, increase your enjoyment with using the binoculars. So one of the reasons that the 8x42 or in this case the 10x42 are so popular is that they're compact roof prism uh, binoculars and they're fairly lightweight. For example, this one is uh, 25 ounces and really quite compact. Some of the binoculars that cost $3,000 weigh a little bit more. The material is uh, polycarbonate with a nice rubberized finish. That's to keep the weight down. And the extra low dispersion glass, which is fully multi-coated, uh, really reduces uh, chromatic aberration and gives you a much clearer and brighter picture than uh, the cheaper glass you find on cheaper binoculars. It may be just regular glass or high definition glass. The glass on these is, is really quite good. The build quality is really nice and they fit really good in your hands. You know, one of the issues with uh, deciding whether to do 8 by 42 or 8 power or 10 power is, uh, you know, how hard it is to hold it steady. And I, I personally like the 10 power better. These are very easy to uh, hold steady. They're much easier for me to track birds and see more detail. So let's go over some of the features. 42 millimeter objective lenses, extra low dispersion lenses, so they let in a lot of light and uh, greatly reduce the chromatic aberration or the clarity of, of what you see around objects. Like for example, with birds, you might see a bird perched on a, a branch against a really strong sunny background or any number of really high contrast situations, especially with regard to the sun. And you'll see, you know, some, some aberration around that. You know, there's a reason why photographers take uh, photos in the golden hour in the morning and in the uh, late afternoon to avoid those circumstances. But sometimes you just can't avoid that. The extra low dispersion lenses go a long way to reducing the chromatic uh, aberration. Now, to be honest, this is in the $200 price range. That's a good niche for getting a, a high quality uh, binocular that you're really going to be happy with for nature and bird watching but obviously when you start talking about spending two and three and almost four thousand dollars for a pair of binoculars that are actually about the same size and have similar uh, parameters what you're really paying for is the optics and you know increasing amounts of clarity increasing amounts of brightness it really boils down to uh, how much money you want to spend versus uh, how much uh, enjoyment we want to get out of the binoculars if money is no object, then you know certainly go ahead and spend several thousand dollars on a pair of uh, high-end binoculars. But I think most people to do bird watching and uh, camping or outdoor activity and want to observe nature will be pretty happy with binoculars in the $200 range. So let's run over the features of these binoculars. Of course, it has the uh, lens caps for both the objective lenses and the eyepiece. And really what determines whether you're going to be happy with a pair of binoculars is how it's going to fit you. So when you go to select a pair of binoculars, uh, like this, there's a, the first thing to do is how do you adjust it for yourself. The Nature DX ED binoculars have adjustable eye cups. Uh, you know, I wear eyeglasses, so for me, I have the eye cups all the way down. And if you need to adjust the distance, rotate them up, and there's a firm stops on them. Find that perfect fit for your eyes. Now, the way you adjust these is that you cover the right lens, and you look through it with your left eye and you get the focus just right at some distant object is you get the perfect focus for your uh, left eye you cover the left side and you look through the binoculars and with your right eye there's a diopter adjustment and you adjust that to get clear focus in your right eye and when that's complete when you use the, the focus wheel on the uh, binoculars then you, everything should be in focus now i have a really dominant left eye so you know left to its own devices my left eye would really just take over uh, and so it's really for me it's really important to get these adjusted right so that i can look through them with both eyes and not wear out my eyes on a long day of uh, using the binoculars a lot of people may not realize it but they do have a definitely a dominant eye the focus wheel 
is very uh, smooth and easy to use when you're holding the binoculars steady. So uh, one of the things that's important is if you have the binoculars up to your eye and you're running the focus wheel while you're looking through them, the focus wheel is nice and smooth and uh, easy to turn so you can make minor focal adjustments without lowering the binoculars or unduly interrupting your viewing experience. The exit pupil diameter on these binoculars is 4.1 millimeters, which is really almost identical to a $3,000 pair of binoculars that I looked at. Eye relief is a little over 14 millimeters, and that's one area where the really expensive binoculars have a little bit of an edge and may have a little bit more eye relief. Uh, and that's you know more significant when you wear glasses uh, but as a glassware and uh, being nearsighted these uh, binoculars work perfect for me now i could actually use these binoculars without my glasses i mean you could adjust these to work without your glasses but then every time you put them down you wouldn't be able to see so uh, you know i'm nearsighted and i have a really strong left dominant eye so i have you know some challenges uh, with wearing glasses and using these binoculars and i found them really easy to uh, adjust and uh, work for me just fine, no problems at all, without a lot of eye strain and get them adjusted just, yeah, just the way I like it. The other critical thing to adjust for is the inner pupillary distance, which is the distance between the uh, center of the left and right uh, eyepiece, and that corresponds with your inner pupillary distance of your eyes. For example, if you get an eye exam, the optometrist usually provides you a prescription that has your inner pupillary distance on it. And you can also measure it yourself with the ruler in millimeters. This has a real generous uh, range of the inner pupillary distance from 56 to 74 millimeters, which will fit the vast majority of people. And that's the same range that you see on a lot of the high-end binoculars. And so what you do is you look through the binoculars and you adjust your inner pupillary distance by moving them in and out until you get a perfect circle between the two eyes. If you just uh, have them in any random position and put them up to your eyes, you're probably going to see parts of uh, two different circles. So after you've got them all set for focus, you carefully adjust them until you get that perfect big circle. And that's going to give you the best view and the brightest view and the wide, widest field of view. The field of view is, uh, is good on these. It's 5.9 degrees or about 309 feet at 1,000 yards. The uh, 8 by 42 will give you a little bit wider field of view. You know, the field of view has a bearing on your ability to uh, lock onto a bird or scan an area for birds or things like that. But personally, I, I have no problem at all with the 10 by 42s and I prefer them to the 8 by 42s. Celestron also makes the uh, 8 by 42 in this same model. But I prefer to have the magnification uh, because I want to see more detail on the birds. And it's in addition to the extra low dispersion lenses, which are fully multi coated. Uh, the binoculars are also nitrogen filled and uh, waterproof, so you can use these out in the rain, no problem. And the prisms are fit back four prisms, uh, which are the kind of prisms that you want on your uh, binoculars, and they're phase coated. And really, you get really vivid, clear color uh, with these. I was impressed with the brightness and the clarity of the color. At uh, 8 or 10 power magnification, you're not talking about a, a lot of magnification. Uh, so generally, you're going to be looking at fairly close range with these when you look at birds. And uh, it has a minimum focus distance of 6.5 feet, which is really good. And that's really the same uh, minimum focal distance that you uh, see on the more expensive binoculars. So to summarize the Celestron Nature DXED binoculars in the 10 by 42 style, Really impressed with the binoculars. The fit and finish is excellent. They have a, a range of adjustability that will fit the vast majority of people, and it works fine with me with my eye, eyeglasses and my uh, unique uh, eye uh, prescription challenges. And uh, really comfortable to use for a long period of time. Their weight is uh, actually less than what some of the more expensive binoculars uh, weigh, and their size is a little bit uh, smaller. Comes with a carrying strap and a uh, case and they are waterproof and of course binoculars I mean you got to figure they're going to get knocked around a little bit when you're out in the field that's another thing I talked about when you're you know buying really expensive binoculars you got to take kind of worry about taking care of them unless money is no object but these uh, seem to be really robust should be able to uh, hold up to really uh, heavy duty uh, even in the in the rain or snow there's a couple of accessories that go with these binoculars that I've been testing out and I wanted to show you one is, of course, the binoculars are tripod mountable, and there's this cover in the center of the binoculars that you remove, which exposes a, a standard uh, tripod mount. And then they have a Celestron uh, binocular uh, tripod mount. 
which is a nice uh, product and it's really well made. It just goes through in here and you, uh, you just screw the binocular tripod mount here into the middle like that firmly and then this mounts to a tripod and I'll show you a couple of examples of that. And there's a couple of reasons to use it on a tripod if you're going to be watching an area you know, like a wildlife area maybe all day long or something like that and especially if there's one spot a rookery or something like that that you might be watching or a nest you can set these up on a, a tripod right on that spot and just look through them and uh, give you a break from uh, holding them all day long when you're done with the tripod adapter you just unscrew it and uh, you're back to a regular pair of binoculars Put the cover back on, and you're good to go. This is the Celestron Nex YZDX uh, smartphone adapter kit. And this is what you can use to attach to a uh, binocular, spotting scope, uh, microscope, or a telescope to be able to uh, take pictures and videos of what you see through the optic on your smartphone. And this is a bit of an engineering marvel here. This is <laughs> quite impressive. And this will fit just about any smartphone and the way it works is your smartphone just snaps in there securely and you can do it with the case on or case off but the most important thing of course is lining up your camera there's a lot of cheap adapters out there that are really make uh, digiscoping difficult this one has xyz adjustments for up and down and left and right and uh, forward and backward uh, and each optic is a little bit different how it interfaces with the uh, smartphone so whether it's a spotting scope or binoculars or a telescope, you attach this and then you can use these uh, fine-tuning adjustments to get the perfect alignment, to get that perfect circle uh, for digiscoping and getting quality uh, pictures and videos with your phone. And this is a pretty impressive uh, holder. And I look forward to trying it out on spotting scopes. So what I'll probably do is make a special video uh, just going over how this works and showing you some results with this in the future. And the adapter kit comes with a Bluetooth shutter for your camera, so you uh, pair it with your uh, phone, and then you launch your uh, camera software in your phone, and then you either take uh, pictures or uh, stop and start videos with the uh, Bluetooth shutter so that you don't have to touch the phone and cause any blurring of motion or uh, shaking with, by touching it with your fingers. You can digiscope with this holder in the horizontal or the vertical position. Here's an example in the horizontal position. And here's an example of digiscoping in the vertical position. But if you really think you're going to be doing a lot of digiscoping, you might uh, find yourself gravitating toward a spotting scope. And I think what I'll do is test this out and, and give you a more uh, in-depth look at this uh, in a later video.